Hello everyone, this is Jackie Williams, Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator here in Auckland, New Zealand. And in this video, I would like to share with you some tips and ways to use your water painters. Now this is a tool that either you already have and maybe you could just use some tips for using them even more or even better. Or it's something that you've maybe thought about or skipped over and haven't yet purchased them because you didn't see the value. So hopefully I can share with you some ways to use these. But first I just wanna quickly show you how they come. So they come in a pack of three. I don't, they don't come purple. This one's just dyed purple for whatever reason. And you've got a very fine water brush, a medium one, and then a very wide one with the lids to match. Now the barrels are empty. And so these unscrew and then you can fill the barrel with typically is with water, but you can of course put other mediums in there too, depending on the technique that you are doing. I just like to keep the lids on to protect those bristles. And you do wanna make sure that you get the correct lids onto the correct pen in order to not damage those um, bristles. Now, some other tools that you may want to have as well. This is watercolor paper or a piece of watercolor paper. This is 100% cotton, so you can use your water brushes on them and get lots of water on them and they will not fall apart. And then you may want some black embossing powder. And this just, um, when you are sometimes using water techniques, it's nice to have your image embossed because it gives it just that tiny little wall on the edges, which helps contain the water a bit. As an option though, if, if you don't wanna emboss, it doesn't have to be black even, it can be any of the colors of embossing powder you will want to have a waterproof ink. And the only two waterproof inks that we have at the moment are Stazon, and we have the Jet Black and the Saddle Brown color. So let's get started with our techniques. I'm going to start with that watercolor paper. And for this sample, I'm going to use the Winterly Treetops, and this is a brand new one, just come out uh, first few days of September in the September through December mini catalog. And the first technique I wanna show you is doing a watercolor wash in the background. So I want to use pool party for my, for my background. Now, one way you can do it is take the ink refill and I apologize, I didn't realize how dirty this looked until I saw it through the camera is uh, fill a little dish with some water and drop some ink in there, stir it up, and then you have a nice smooth wash. Another way you could do the same sort of thing is to actually put some water into your the barrel of your painter and then drop some drops of color right into the barrel. Give it a shake and then you can just paint on your wash. Now this is particularly nice if there's a color that you use quite often or if you are making perhaps quite a few of a card. Say you're making sets of cards to give as gifts or Christmas cards or um, a wedding invitation or something like that. Then it's just nice and easy, it's ready to go and you can just paint that color straight on. You could also have the color in here and then still pick up other color and uh, get kind of a two-toned look there as well. I'm just gonna leave this one clean for the moment. Okay, then another way you can use your water painter, I've got one over here, is if you want to tear your paper and you are someone who's not that confident with tearing or always concerned you're gonna get it wrong, I have a few of those who come to my classes, you can use your water painter to squeeze some water and just draw where you want to tear. You might wanna draw it several times. And this works not only with watercolor paper, but with any paper. And then when you tear, it should fairly easily follow that line because that area has been weakened. Then once this is dry, a third way that you can use your water painter is actually to flick on some color if you like that look. So I'm just gonna put some scrap paper underneath me and I'm just gonna pick up some of this pecan pie ink here 
and I've gotten my water painter quite wet and I've got ink right on the end of the brush. And then if I just tap it down here, probably got a little bit too uh, generous there, but you get the idea. You can just flick on some color and it comes out very easily and quickly this way. So here is my finished project with that technique. I have just stamped the birds in black stays on and watercolored those in as well and uh, then just finished off the card with some of the petunia pop paper and the winterly treetops paper and you can see I've got that nice blue watercolor wash in the background to give it some grounding. Now I have a few more tips to share. Now let's make another project. So these papers are from another set that's coming out of papers called Snowy Scene. And I'm going to put those down either side of my card front. Okay, now I'm gonna set those aside. Now, on this piece of white, I'm going to use Pool Party again. I didn't realize that they were the same background colors still just now, but this time I'm going to just blend that color on like this because I have basic white here and the basic white really just doesn't accept the water all that well and the watercolor paper was too yellow to go against the snowy scenes paper, if that makes sense. So I needed to use white to get it to all match. Okay, now I am using the brand new More Than Autumn stamp and die bundle. And this is just a cute one with, with various little treat images and lots of fun words. And I actually like that the dies um, have these words as well. And these little ones I'll use here in a minute. It's always helpful to have word dies. So I'm going to use this time Memento Black because I'm not going to watercolor on this and I'm just going to stamp this calls for. And then from there, I'm going to wet down the middle of my Calypso Coral paper again. And we'll tear that. And you could even wet those edges a second time this just weakens the paper. And then when I go to curl those up, it's just a little bit easier to curl when it's wet. Plus, if it's wet and then it, you know, and then when it dries, it will really hold this shape quite well. And then I'll put these on either side. Okay, and then I'll place this on my card front. All right, now let's get into our watercoloring. I have black embossed on watercolor paper, the, I guess that would be foam and the coffee cup. So let's bring over my colors again. The foam, I'm just going to paint in basic beige and I'm gonna go out the lines a little bit like that. And then the coffee cup, I am gonna do a pecan pie for the cup. I'll go a little heavier on one side than the other. When you are watercoloring, if you have two colors that are right next to each other, you wanna make sure color one is dry before you do color two, otherwise they will bleed together. I do have that little tiny heat embossing wall to separate the colors, but I'm not gonna risk it anyway. And I'm just going to give that a quick dry. And I'm gonna push the color to the left so that darker color stays on that side. Okay, now I'll get some petal pink and just lightly color in that label and then this is Calypso Coral here and I'm just going to place that on the one side and I'll just let it naturally bleed out and however it ends up is how it will be. Same thing, I'll put a little more pecan pie on the one side and then I'll just let that dry 
and I might put a little more basic beige on here on one side and then I would, I would just let that dry naturally and let the colors blend how they are going to blend and then I would take the dyes once they're dry and cut those out I prepared these earlier I'm just going to add a little adhesive there and I'm going to add some strings so this is the dotted burlap trim one of my personal favorites this is from the latte suite now I'll just twirl that around into a few uh, circles like this and adhere that to the adhesive. And then the cup and the foam will go over top. Now I have just a few little details. There is a little straw included in this set. Now the straw I colored in with markers because it is quite um, small. And then there is a cute little heart in the die set. And then this is probably my favorite thing. These little words that says coffee and then there's one that says latte. I'm not even a coffee drinker myself, but I still think they're cute. So I've put the adhesive um, sheet on the back when I die cut it. Oops. So I can just peel that off and stick that down. And then it says, this calls for coffee. And we just need to add a couple of embellishments. Now I've got some loose embellishments. So I found the easiest thing with those is to add your glue now and then drop the embellishments on top of the glue. So I'm using these great champagne iridescent dots, but Honestly, they just look like rocks to me, and I think they are fabulous. They are just the right color for this project. There seems to be four different sizes in here. And there we go. I might just add a little bit of flicking to this one as well. There we go, that's enough right there. So let me share with you some other samples. So we've learned how about coloring in, creating a watercolor wash background, uh, using your water painters to tear and also kind of rough up the edge and also flicking some color onto your projects. So here's some other ones that I've made. This is the first version of this card that I made, this time using the A Little Latte papers themselves and doing it in a different color way. And then this one is using the Boho Beach Kit image. And I did a watercolor wash over my embossed image and then went back and colored in, in a darker color, the image. And this is a similar idea, actually, where I have blended on the color, but even though it's on basic white, I just very lightly, without much water, colored on some colors. I wanted a uh, watercolory look rather than the Stampin' Blends or the Markers look, which is a little more solid. So it does give quite a different effect. And then this is using the Irresistible Blooms where I have just colored in my flowers and then also again used it for the color in the background. Clearly a favorite technique. And same with this one, did this time basic beige in the background and then over the top colored in the image after uh, embossing my white flowers and this is the enduring beauty bundle and then for this one I heat embossed the butterflies in gold the butterfly in gold and then added fresh freesia and blackberry bliss one nice thing about using your water painters is because it dilutes the colors down this is blackberry bliss but because it's been diluted and uh, you know spread out then um, sometimes you end up with quite quite a different color. So it's a way to maximize all of your ink colors as well. There you go. Hopefully that inspires you to pull out your water painters and use some of these techniques on your next project. If you have any other suggestions on how to use them, please leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any questions on anything, I'm always happy to answer questions. Feel free to share this video with your friends. This is Jackie Williams and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.